just because I can. Okay, welcome to today's seminar. Our speaker is Joseph Fergola, who's joined us today. He's a visiting professor in the business school, and he's going to talk to us about a method of assessing risk in a project, particularly for low TRL or visionary concept. So I'll pass you over directly to Joseph. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As, I, as I said, I'm going to speak to you about low TRL. TRL stands for Technology Readiness Level, and it's a measure of the distance between the concept and the reality of a system or a product. And uh, it's important to understand uh, that type of phenomena in any developmental system so you can determine the level of investment to make and when it's going to be, when a product will be expected to meet the marketplace. Uh, in some markets, uh, if you miss the marketplace by a month or so, you know, something like an iPhone or a, uh, something like that, you can lose a significant portion of the sales. So it's important to be able to accurately forecast such things and to, in those cases where you find out that you're not going to, you can't expect to get the product delivered at the time you want, then you've got to think of ways to mitigate the risk of delivering on the scheduled date, and that's one of the things that we'll talk about a bit. I, I like to have questions right during the, the talk, so if you want to speak up and ask questions at any point in time, it's fine with me. If you want to be silent, well, that's okay too. All right. <coughs> How do new, and, and I'm going to be speaking primarily in the example of space systems, where most of my experience has occurred, but this applies equally well to all sorts of computer systems, game systems, phone, uh, telecommunication systems, anything that's a developmental project. So how do new technologies, those that is, those things that are at a low technological readiness level, affect the program design space? And, and, and the, the fact is that we want to incorporate these sorts of things because they improve the performance of the mission. And a mission could necessarily be a space mission, it could be a mission to be able to communicate and provide better data handling services and so on. They can also improve cost efficiency and they often enable missions that were never able to be done before. So for example, in the second generation iPhone has enabled video, which didn't exist in the first generation iPhone. So that feature expanded the marketplace for the concept that was already starting to play out. And one of the things that people do in these developmental systems is try to make sure that when the product line comes out, there are additional enhancements to the product line available at certain points in time to make sure that the product stays alive in the marketplace as opposed to becoming uh, old hat. And we can talk a little bit about that. Now, the problem is <clears throat> that since the product is developmental, there's an increased risk in exceeding the schedule for the delivery date. So if you want to get a product out to market, let's say in 18 months, as most, most computer products are developed, uh, and you don't think you're going to get there, well, that can be a significant problem because you, can lose the, you could lose the entire market, actually, uh, as uh, happened with the VHS and the and the, the, the Betamax system, even beta was, even though beta was a better product because it got to market late, so many people had already bought the VHS system. That's a tape. I have to watch out with, yeah, but see people, you're too young to even realize what a VHS is, but uh, it was a tape. We actually used tape at one time be, before we used disc. So what we tried to do is to come up with a simple top-down, and I'll try to explain what I mean by top-down, approach to quickly map the trade space of performance versus schedule risk by making schedule uncertainty a function of the technological readiness level. Uncertainty is the most important concept to deal with in schedule risk, and you'll see how it affects the overall uh, the capability of delivering your product by a certain date. I'll talk about somewhat of an introduction. I'll talk about approaches that have been taken in the past a little bit I'll talk about the proposed and recommend, recommended approach that we've developed. I'll talk about the proposed quantification of, of the schedule risk uncertainty. And I'll give you an example, an example that we've just uh, applied to um, uh, launch vehicles, that is vehicles that would launch a crew or cargo into space. And I'll give you some conclusions and talk about what we will be doing in the future. Well, as an introduction, both in government and commercial industry, there are differences in proposed configurations, and these translate 
into expected levels, in our case of safety, but it could be in performance, and different levels of heritage technologies. And each of these are at different levels of development, which we call TRL levels. <clears throat> if the program grows a wide in range, this will lead to many proposals, various scopes, and widely, TRL, widely different TRL levels. So as a consumer, or as a, uh, a consumer of these developmental systems, which you might be a, an investor, for example, you have to decide which ones of these products to invest in. And there's a wide variety of them. Some of them offering very nice features, but they're highly developmental. And others offering less features, but are less developmental, so more likely to hit the marketplace sooner. And you have to be able to understand, <coughs> in terms of investment, which ones of these are likely to be better performance. So programs with focus and ultimate goals, you have to provide performance metrics for comparison. And these should be based on the technological readiness level. So in one case, in the case we're talking about, the performance measure is safety. But it could be a lot of things. It could be megabits per second. But some sort of measure of performance. So what we're trying to do is to say, when will the product be ready to be released, OK, at the level of performance we want? Okay? And we have to have a performance measure to be able to understand what that is. Okay, now we would believe whatever system you use to make this decision, it should be a systematic sy decision tool uh, to support these decision-making processes. And we tried to develop one that was accurate relative to the conclusions on differential merits and of the alternatives, that appropriately captured the key drivers based on historical reality, that had, was applicable at various levels of detail in the design process, was an efficient decision-making tool and capability of fast exploration of a rather large, in most cases, rather large uh, design space. So we might be looking at thousands of different alternative concepts in a particular area uh, to be able to decide which are the best ones to investigate and to invest in. So it's sort of like a portfolio analysis you would do if you were looking at different types of financial instruments that you were thinking of investing in. These are product investments similar type of process. In the financial uh, uh, instrument investment process, you're looking at rate of return and risk. Here we're looking at rate of performance and risk, where the return is basically the performance measure of the system. As you can see, we, we believe <coughs> that there should be four major elements of the system. Uh, we first need to describe the system and technology options and what are their alternatives, what are the important metrics and uh, figures of merit that measure those metrics, what are the risk schedule parameters, that is, what probability density function should you use to describe the goals for each element, stating the probability of, of reaching the schedule by a certain date. Then we want to model the system, and that is calculate the in integrated programmatic risk, calculate the integrated performance, and I'll explain what I mean by integrated, because some systems don't do that type of integration, and come up with the overall uh, overall system elements win the scope of overall alternatives, then map the trade space in a visual way so that uh, decision makers can clearly see the advantages and disadvantages of alternatives. Now, if you didn't get that right away, don't worry about it because I'll be repeating some of that. Now, this is the NASA so-called TRL barometer. The United States Air Force has one also slightly different but very much uh, the same in, in, in thrust. And as you can see, it starts at TRL 1, where we're talking about basic technology, technology research. And it goes all the way up to an integrated system that's been tested and deployed and in operation.